Hearts wrenching cases stay with me, even though I haven't practiced clinically for quite a while now. Ooh, thinking about a complex case it was a, a lady who came to me who had a neurological condition in the family. She was at risk of carrying and developing symptoms of later on. A case I remember very well was a case of a young man who wanted testing for Huntington's disease. He was well, he had no signs of the condition, but his father had it. A difficult case that comes to mind was a couple who had conceived and the pregnancy was going along fine but then quite late in the pregnancy during one of the scans some abnormalities were noticed. This uh, patient of mine was coping not only with his own terminal diagnosis and, and the knowledge that he wasn't going to be around for his children um, but wanting to uh, uh, be part of and support the knowledge around their genetic status and their risk of carrying the same gene as him. Testing diagnosed a rare recessive condition which was really very serious and so the couple made the really difficult decision to terminate that pregnancy. It was quite late in the pregnancy. He was a young man on the threshold of the rest of his life. He was taking a major opportunity to do with his work. They then conceived again naturally not long afterwards and that, that time because the diagnosis was known they were able to have a CVS early on. He was also making plans for children with his partner. She was in her late 30s. She was at that stage in her life where she really wanted to have a child but absolutely wanted to avoid passing the condition on. Patients who carry genetic conditions can offer, often describe a, a sense of, of guilt that they may pass that condition down to their children. It showed a, a second affected pregnancy and they had a termination earlier this time. Three out of the four children unfortunately had inherited um, his faulty gene. Having gone through two really traumatic terminations, one late and one early, they were considering whether they would want to then go down the route of PGD, which would take them out of the, the scenario of having to have prenatal diagnosis and termination, but would put them into a situation of having to go through IVF, even though they were fertile and, and didn't really like the idea of medicalising things that far. The children began, got to an age when they were old enough to hear about the gene and to start to understand that they needed screening for a condition that um, in fact meant that they had lost their father um, at a very young age. I saw him twice and we spent a lot of that time talking with him and his partner about the reality that their lives together might end up with her caring for him. Seeing her go through all that, those hosts of emotions, dealing with firstly the chance of having this condition herself and, and the effect that has on a person in their, in their life, their job, their friendships with people. Sadly, the result was not what either of us wanted. He had the gene, he would get the condition. To be sharing that moment with her, I think, was um, really powerful. When I saw him for follow-up, he said that although the news was not what he wanted, it was still positive, because he was able to use it to move on with his life to help guide her through that, through to thinking about reproductive options and, and helping her come to, to what she felt was, a, was a, a comfortable decision for her moving forward. Those very difficult decision-making processes was what I was helping them to, to work through the pros and cons of those different options. It's a hard one for me, it's one of the ones that sticks in my mind. All patients affect you, but that patient affected me quite deeply. While we may say, from a guideline point of view, that's a straightforward um, situation. You have a gene test, you go for screening. The reality for families is, is very different.